Coming full circle, perhaps one of the most important themes emerging from the current dialogue was that upon realising that the system was corrupt and fraudulent, there began a process of self-empowerment, of standing up against the system, of refusing to be abused and exploited by the system. However, as a disclaimer, this is a developing area with new knowledge coming out and apparent changes occurring all the time. There had been people speaking on the so-called free man or sovereign topics who, it has been claimed, have misled people. And as a result of people following certain charismatic speakers, websites or forums, people have got themselves into trouble. They have lost money or have even been imprisoned. To be involved in this area, you really need to know what you're doing or be aligned with someone who does and can be relied upon. One man who seemed to know a lot more than most and who was undoubtedly at the cutting edge was Salon. Yeah, well, uh, okay, well, I'm commonly known as Salon. Um, uh, briefly, if I tell you the story of how I got to discover the whole system was corrupt, I found out about 9-11 six, seven years ago and l looked into that side of things. Um, during the time I was running my own business and had my own house and then uh, in 2006 the government brought out some new legislation which basically killed my business and by February 2008 the business was gone, the house is in the process of being repossessed. Uh, but I believe this absolutely had to happen to me to get to where I am now. Um, yeah, it was very upsetting, but if I still had, was de there defending a house and, and whatever else, I probably wouldn't be doing what I'm doing now. Um, I, around about 2008, after everything went tits up, I, um, I started looking into the more financial side of things, although I'd been looking into them anyway, um, realising the whole system was corrupt, uh, which anyone with half a brain <laughs> can see. I um, started looking into the the financial aspects of things um, and quite fortunately I came across Get Out of Debt Free as one of the sites that I'd been looking at but it just seemed to resonate really well on there uh, and the, the, everyone else seemed to be of the same sort of ilk that realised the system was corrupt and were trying to put information out to help everyone else that was struggling uh, which I did, I started uh, looking deeply into the um, the postmaster side of things, which is a higher than the statute and act type of things that we, we know about at the moment. A, f a friend of mine recently pointed out that if you go to court with a document, they'll stamp it and sign across it. And then if you sign across it again, you actually make yourself the postmaster. So if you ever actually go to court, you can be the postmaster, which the judge is acting as a postmaster. But if you make yourself the postmaster, you also need to... Um, sign on the back of the document as well like you want to check to endorse it basically and when you get to that status you basically tell them what's what's going on you ask them the questions they give you the answers not the other way around this is something we're just looking into of the latest stuff at the moment um, we haven't got there yet but we obviously want to make sure we know what we're doing before we get there um, this debt side of things I owed allegedly somewhere around about £50,000 worth of debt. We managed to, the house got, went with a little bit of equity. Um, and realising that I'd been had over a barrel, I decided that they weren't going to get a penny, and they never did. Uh, and I started off using John's letters, and then as I, as I was on the forum more and more, and I realised that loads of people were asking questions, but nobody was answering them. And as I learned more over the, very quickly in fact, the information came to my, uh, my knowledge, I started to answer the questions to the point now where I'm looked at as quite, quite knowledgeable on the subject, but more, more beneficial is the fact that others that are now coming to the forums are, are doing their own research. Because as I, I always say, you know, just because I found this out doesn't mean it's true. Go and do your own research, check it out yourself. What that does, it gives you more power because when you start saying something, you've looked into it and you know exactly what you're saying is correct and uh, it self-empowers you, which is what we're trying to do. Um, it's dead easy to walk hand in hand with somebody through the process, which I do from time to time and I do even have some people that come to the house and I've explained everything. In, in fact, on Monday I'm due to go around a friend's house um, 
to explain it all to him because although I've done the process for him, he's still worried because he doesn't understand it. So I've got to go around and explain it to him. His wife totally gets it, but again, I don't mind. We we en actually enjoy uh, explaining it to people. And then yes, they go on the process and they're all nervous and scared at the time. And then as it goes on, you can see them change from being a nervous, scared little slave, if you want, to finally realising it's them that has the power. They have the consent. If they say no, well, it's no. And that's probably one of the biggest words that we need to get to use is no. Because when we realise how powerful that word is, you take back the power of your life. Um, how, how do you think things are moving? Do you think things are moving on with events like this and all, all these kind of things happening? Do you think things are, are, are moving on faster than people are booking the system more and more? Absolutely. I mean, one of the things with, with uh, get out of debt is that presently we're having some a new member sign up every 15 minutes, and that in itself speaks volumes. And um, the beauty is there's so many different people attacking from so many different angles and, and pulling the system down from because not everything they do is corrupt. Everything is corrupt. And we're all discovering th these laws. It is like what Michael was just talking about, about the, the Bill, Bill of Rights Act, 1688-89, um, where he was saying rightly that the Bill of Rights Act was absolutely in full uh, power um, but in the particular case that Michael was turned out, apparently it wasn't involved in that case, which is, you know, it's ridiculous. It, one sentence saying, yes, it's, it's, it it's has its full power, and the next, but it's not in this case, you know. But th this is also helps to, towards the, um, the parking tickets uh, and penalty charge notices and dropping some litter. It's all a, a fine given before you've been taken to court. So it's therefore, it's not lawful. And, of course, it's, if... The, th the, the most powerful thing I've tried to get over to the people in the community at the moment is that I, 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 me, along with a lot of other friends, have realised going to court and making state the Bill of Rights Act, blah, 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 states this, and they just, oh, yeah, OK, not interesting, chuck you out. Whereas we've come to the realisation that if you go to court and you're going to use the Bill of Rights, for instance, for a parking ticket, we'll say, or it'll be a tribunal then, and you go to that tribunal and you have it printed off half a dozen times, and you make sure everyone in that room gets a copy of it. The, 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 the prosecutor, the magistrates, even if there's someone clean up, get, give them a copy so they can watch. So when, when you do, what you do then is you then, sir, with the greatest respect, the Bill of Rights Act, 1688-89, section 12, does it or does it not clearly state that promises of fines or forfeitures before being taken to court are illegal and void? Now, bear in mind, everyone else has got a copy of that document and they're reading it and they can see what was just said is absolutely correct. They can't answer anything but yes. And at that point, you say, well then, sir, what am I doing here? Because he's admitted that f the fine that you've been given isn't lawful. What am I doing here? What can he say to that? Well, it, it, if everything goes correct, all he can say is, you're correct. It's thrown out. But again, it's questioned, because I did come across a part where somebody had attempted to use a Bill of Rights, but they'd get, gone in on the process of making statements. It states here, blah, 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 blah. And of course, you're, you're making statements, whereas what you've got to remember is you need to be in the key role of, as, of the master, the one in charge, because the master asks the questions, the servants, which they are public servants, they answer the questions. And when you put it like I've just explained it, I've asked the questions of the master, they've gave me the correct answer, so what am I doing here? There's nothing to be here for, because that's it. It's sorted. They've given you the remedy. Uh, but as well as that, there's all the other sort of statutes and that that we've come across as well. Um, post law, which I briefly mentioned, I looked into that, and I found that whoever is the master is, is the master. So with the letters that we use, I then started looking into it further. And, and David Sidney Rideout, you can look up on YouTube if any of his videos haven't been deleted yet. Um, gives very good information on how to use stamps. 20, 30 years ago, every legal document had a stamp on it and it was stamped over and sealed and everything. And I think they realized that they were actually showing us the true power of documents. And so they, they eventually faded that out. So not, you don't see it anymore. But that power of the post law still remains in full fact. So when you're putting stamps on the top right-hand corner, the bottom right-hand corner, flip it over. These are ordinary postage stamps, aren't they? Just normal one-piece stamps I use. Then for my seal, it's my right thumbprint in a red 
ink pad you can get from any good stationer. That's my seal ever all, every single stamp. Um, at the, the top stamp, I also write with the autograph, I date underneath it, and I also sign across it. This makes me the postmaster. With the stamp, this is for if I'm dealing with uh, a debt collector or a bank or anything like that. With the, 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 the stamp at the bottom, again, it's, uh, I put my thumbprint over it. On the top of it, I write seal, because I'm letting them know that that's my seal. And then to the left of it, I, I write the words copy claim, because this is my copy claim against them. Again, I date underneath it, and you sign across it as well. People, if people aren't getting that straight away, they can find all this information on the site. And that yeah, I, if... I, I, the, the, it, is, it has been posted a few times. It, again, David Sidney Rider does a fantastic. It, it's, it's about eight pieces, but even if you just watch the first piece, which is half an hour long, that will give you all the information you need on stamps. Um, and, and making yourself the, like I say, the postmaster is very, very important. And you also do this, the similar on the back. Uh, you sign across it, well, you thumbprint it first, sign across it, and date it. This has very big significance uh, if you are actually thinking of taking it to court. What, being the postmaster, what it does, putting them stamps and seals and signing it and dating it, it basically means that if it goes before a judge, a judge can't put it face down so the blank face is facing him and say, I see nothing of interest because you're the postmaster and you know exactly what's on that document. One of the things they also try to do is put it, put it the right way up, but look in between the lines of the print and say, I see nothing here. Well, with all those stamps and uh, seals and signatures on it, it means that you can't do that. Now one of the things on the letters we do have is without prejudice. Now that means that it, that document can't be used against you in court unless you and whoever you sent it to agree. Now they're not going to agree to use, using that document in court simply because it basically, we simply ask them a number of questions. You know, you're saying I owe you so much money, well okay can you answer me this, where did the money come from, can you show me the contract, and, you know, various other bits and bobs we ask them, which of course they can't supply. If you ever do go to court though, all you need to do is swear either, and I do say either because there are two very powerful ones. Lately I've, I've come to the understanding that the affirmation is more powerful than the affidavit, and I have posted it in on the site, um, but either one of them still works fine. You would just swear what was in the body of letters one, two and three. So you would say what was in letter one, what was in letter two and what was in letter three. And uh, all you're doing there is then you say, because this is my oath or attestation, um, and you're putting that forward for them to rebut. Now, of course, they can't rebut anything because what you put in the letters is exactly what you put there, except you're just putting the body of what was in the letters without the legal little bits at the bottom. And you send that, send that to the court, and the court or the defence has to rebut it for everything you've put in that. Now, they can't rebut it if what you've put in it is the truth. So therefore, it automatically stands as, as default judgment that everything you've said is absolutely correct. And then they've got to try and say their point of view to dispute the fact that what you put in your, your affirmation or affidavit is correct. And they can't because by them not rebutting it, they've agreed to it. So they've agreed that you said, I will be happy to pay any money I lawfully owe if you can prove that I actually owe that money. Which sounds perfectly um, fair and legitimate to me. Yes, we are starting to get the... Re recently we've got a few court cases that we've actually won. Not going the Freeman route, but going the route I mentioned earlier about the um, Bill of Rights Act type of thing. Um, we lost a case yesterday where one of, our, one of our friends was actually suing a solicitor for £5 million. But, although he lost that case, it's given the ammunition for the next case, because it was RBS, Royal Bank of Scotland solicitors that he was doing, and now he's going to be uh, taking on the Royal Bank of Scotland direct. So it's all the same sort of thing that will happen again, except he knows what they're going to say, so this time he'll be able and ready with his defence.